All right, today we're gonna tie a um, streamer fly, a tarpon fly. Uh, we wanna thank Mark Evans for providing us the space in Stone Mountain Outdoors. Today we, usually Friday is Thursday, Thursday nights. We get a bunch of friends and we, we tie flies. We were gonna tie um, a very big fly, seven, eight inch fly, tarpon fly that we use in Costa Rica for river mouth tarpon, basically for, for murky water. Uh, we're tying in a Peak Vice today. We want to thank Al Ritt and Peak Vices for providing us the products. Um, the first thing you want to focus on when you're tie, tying uh, big flies for big fish is focusing on good quality hooks. We don't want to cheap out on the hooks. You may hook the trophy fish of your life and lose it because you're using a cheap thin wire hook for this type of purpose um, and you're out of the game. So basically good brands of hooks we recommend to our clients, Mustad hooks, A-Rex hooks, owner hooks, Gamagatsu hooks, top of the line hooks are a great investment when tying this type of patterns. Now this, excuse me, this specific hook is a Mustad hook, it's a signature fly tying hook, uh, tarpon hooks called, and I've been using them for a while with very good results, very strong, very corrosion resistant so i think it's a great platform for tire flies this fly is a hybrid fly it's a crossover between you know, dan blanton's whistler fly uh, lefty's deceiver fly and brad bowen's optic minnow i guess it's a mix of all of them so it has qualities characteristics of those three flies and we're gonna get started with uh, our thread it's gonna be danville 140. Um, you wanna utilize a good strong thread have a strong platform to begin with so we're gonna get started here i'm gonna start using a red thread we're gonna lay our thread base here and the thread base is critical in order to have the materials really grab onto the hook if we have a very skinny base the hook on the hook the materials may slide and the fly may lose lose its profile here so the first material we're gonna tie is bucktail when we look at bucktail we want to choose high quality flowing bucktail. We don't want the very stiff bucktail for this type of patterns because we want a bucktail that really flows in the water. And the part of the bucktail we're going to work on is the middle portion of the bucktail here. So we're going to have the first material here. We're going to grab a little bit of bucktail. And this is going to be the keel of the fly. We're going to place bucktail here and all the materials are going to splay over the bucktail. So this is going to be the platform in which we're gonna tie the rest of the materials going towards the tail. We wanna clean the bucktail really good, so we got a very clean tie. And we wanna, the, re, the way I cut the bucktail is I always cut the butts and tie it square. So we got a nice pinch of bucktail here, all the way to the middle of the hook. I want a couple of loose wraps, place tension, and I got my keel ready to go. Now, when I tie this bucktail, I want to secure it correctly. If I pull this bucktail and all the fibers go out, it means the fly is not going to have the same durability. So if I pull the bucktail, it should be holding correctly. So this keel, I like to tie it on top of the hook only, okay? So it's going to profile my flies. The tail, we're going to use four rooster hackle feathers. Now, we can use rooster hackle feathers or you can use schlappen feathers. The important thing here is we want it to be a big profile fly. These fish are in murky water. They're looking for big bait fish, mullet. So we want a big profile fly. The, the tails, we're gonna tie them splay out, tarpon style. If you're looking for a fly that has a bigger profile, you wanna spread the tails looking outward. If you're on a more, more of a wispy type tail, we're gonna tie them, marry them together. I like to tie one one feather at a time. It's a, it takes a little longer, but I can have better control of my tie. So I wanna, I'm gonna tie my first feather here. I'm gonna grab my second feather. And I like webby feathers for this type of pattern. Again, it's a big fly. So I want something that's gonna push water and it's gonna have a big profile on the water. We're gonna have our second tackle here. Secure them, and I got my trimming scissors here. We're gonna come in, 
trim it. Now we're gonna tie my other side. We're gonna have our first hackle here. Gauge him, measure him. And if these hackles don't come 100% even, it's not gonna be detrimental to the fly. Because this fly, where it's gonna be fished and how it's gonna be fished, if one hackle is two inches longer than the other one, it's not gonna create a problem. We're gonna come with my fourth hackle. Trim the excess, and when when the, the way I tell my students here is we're gonna clean the fly. Clean the fly means we're gonna have a nice clean tying point again. So there we go. We have our platform and we have our hackles on the back. Something that's very very good for our fish here in this type of waters is flash. I used to shy away from flash years ago. I'm back to flash. I'm a big flash proponent. Um, we're gonna use Magnum Flashable. So this is uh, just a, a little thicker flash. This one's holographic flash. So we're gonna cut a 20 strands flash here. And we're gonna be sure to print them out. And we want our flash to extend as long as the tails, okay? We don't wanna be a little shorter, so that's, there we go. We're gonna hold it. And in order to have durability here with the flash, we're gonna reverse tie on top of it. And that's also gonna give us a little more profile towards the back of the fly. Right there. We're gonna cut a couple of the crazy strangle ones here. So we got a curtain of flash there. And we are going to start our time point here. At this point of the fly, if there's any flashable that goes crazy and it's bugging you or bothering you, you can always come here, clip them off. But the important thing is you already have the tie doubled back. So if you clip them, it's not detrimental to the fly. The strength of the fly is already given with the flashable there, okay? So we got our flash. At this point, I like to touch it with a little bit of glue because sometimes you're tarpon fishing and if a jack or a mackerel comes and hits, it's going to break the flashy boy out. Okay, now our next material is going to be bucktail, okay? And the first bucktail we're going to tie here is we're going to stay with black. We're going to have two sections of bucktail. We're going to do black, red, and then a, a head. I like to tie my bucktail in three sections, a top one and two sides. So we're gonna grab our bucktail here and we're not grabbing skinny pinches of bucktail. We're grabbing nice bucktail. Very important to clean it really good because sometimes the short fibers that end up here in the bucktail, they end up cutting your thread. So we want a real nice clean flow of bucktail. Again, we wanna cut our butts and we're gonna gauge it. That's about right. You don't want this bucktail to extend a lot on the tail because then it's not gonna have the same wispy movement. So here we, we're gonna tie in the bucktail here. And we're gonna pinch it hold it come back to it and go advance our thread forward that bucktail there is going to provide us the transition between the tail and the body of the fly which is critical in these flies you don't want to have a, a skinny tail and a skinny head you want to have a transition towards the head of the fly now the second uh, portion of the bucktail we're going to go to the hide cut a piece Clean it out. It's going to be on the side. I know it takes a little more time, but I guarantee you this fly will be very symmetrical at the end. I'm going to turn our, our rotary vise here. I'm going to tie. Start tying the belly of the fly here. Okay. Now we're going to turn the vise over. And as you can see, I have two pinches of bucktail 
but I still have a clean space here. That's why I like to do three. You've got better control and you can assess the fly easier that way. Yeah. Wrap a pinch of bucktail, clean it really good. I can't stress the cleaning of the bucktail enough. If you don't have clean bucktail, you're gonna end up with thick wraps and just not a clean tie, which I think it's imperative when you're tying this type of flies. Clean it up, hold it, a couple loose turns, pressure down, you go forward, pinch it. And when I look at this, I want to be sure that we have all the bucktail straight across the hook like that. So if I look at the fly from the front or from the sides, I have bucktail all over, okay? Let's say I look at the fly here. If it's a little skinny black here, I just come on one more time and add just a smidge just to have it all uniform. So here's three ties. I'm gonna do three and a little more because I feel like in the topping, I want a little more profile here. So I got it there. So at this point, we're gonna, again, go back to a, tie a little bit of glue. Put a little bit of glue. And I know this fish are very big and this fly may just last one fish, but if we put the glue there, sometimes we may get a couple of tarpon out of one fly and uh, clean up the fly here real quick. At this point, we're gonna use a secondary hackle, which is gonna be a grizzly hackle. And it just gives it a nice twist to the fly. So we got one over here. Gotta look for another one. They sell this half, uh, half hackles here. We got a bunch here. So we wanna select one that's not super skinny, webier one. And I wanna tie this hackle on top, of the, on top of the fly. So basically I just put it on top of the fly, hold it, secure the tie. Clean it back. And now my second hackle. Put it on top, hold it, pinch it, clean it up. Okay. And again, to this big flies, and this crosses over to pike, to musky, to big, these big flies, when we're designing these flies on the vise, we're thinking about how is the fly gonna react in the water? So we want a fly that has a lot of movement, a lot of big profile, and this two hackles give it a nice topping to the head. Now we're gonna change colors here. We're gonna switch to red. This is an example of a very good bucktail that it's very nice flowing, long bucktail. So we're gonna have our, again, our topping. And for years of experience fishing here, this color scheme really, 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 really makes a difference. The black and red is usually the staple here. So we wanna come in the front. We wanna secure here a nice well to put the bucktail. Gauge it. Tie it off. Dab of glue. And the reason I glue here towards the head is because the tarpon is going to come and he's usually going to attack the head of the fly. So that's why I like to go towards the head with a bit more, a little more glue. Now we're going to have a thicker bunch here. Through the side. Now here we're creating also what the profile from the side, okay? 
Okay. Got Rex is here. Don't get thread happy here. I see a lot of people, they get thread happy towards the head and they end up with a big, big, bulky thread wraps there. Last pink bucktail. And any of you look at the bucktail here, it's not a little bit of bucktail. I don't want this to be really skinny. I want it to have a nice profile, okay? So I'm not getting three fibers. I'm getting quite a bit of bucktail here, okay? Hold it, secure your tie, and spread it in the belly of the minnow. And this is very important. When I look at this fly, I have the same distribution of bucktail on the top, on the right, on the left, and on the belly, okay? I am not skipping any part here here just because i like it, it's not necessary i like to throw in a little bit of uh, a different uh, flash so here we're going to use a little bit of red flashaboo this is just to make us feel good about the tie i guess so i like to get three strands double it over that turns out into six And we're gonna go and do it a little shorter here. Pinch it, hold it, tie it off, reverse tie. Cut it off. And here we're gonna clean up the fly a little bit. And um, we used to fish these flies just as it is with a bee chain. Now we're gonna we're gonna give it a twist and we're gonna use this fly with uh we're gonna do a, actually a brush head the brush material is this incredible material my favorite fly tying material for the last 10 years i guess it's a polar fiber brush i absolutely love this thing it's easy to tie it has just the right amount of flash to give it that little kick to the fly and it has all the movement you want I I really, really like this, this brush. So you don't want to get brush happy either. You want to tie the a brush here at our time point. You want to give it three good wraps. You want to print it out. And we're going to fold it over. Don't worry if it looks a little bit messy. You will trap fibers. It's not possible to do it without trapping fibers i don't care who does it or how it does it you try to print as best as you can keep going forward all the way to the other hook and you want to do a capture wrap right there you want to brush it back and Secure it there. Get in here with your bad scissors. Cut the brush. Now, something that's important here is where is my uh, bodkin here? Right here? So, when I come with the bodkin, be, be careful not to hit the thread wraps and you want to clean it up this way. Take your time, there's no necessity to rush here because we are almost done with the fly. So when you see this, what's the purpose of using the brush and not the bead chain? It's gonna fish similar. Now the brush, it's gonna push a lot of water and since we're fishing murky water, it does make a difference. A big profile flash, push water. The fish really tend to find this fly really, really well. Um, our catching rate has gone i think so in my opinion i think it's important to have the the profile of the head according to the profile of the body so right here there you want a clean clean tie at the end of the fly 
before we tie off we want to look at it in all angles it's fine now we're going to find my tools here and we're gonna we're gonna give it a hit a nice stroke back and I, if i look at this fly this is important for the new guys tying it's gonna push water correctly and it's gonna swim right if I have the head with the right profile in every direction. If I have a lot of material here and not enough here, it's not gonna keel the right way. So right here, we've got a fly that if I look at from here, look at from any angle, it looks exactly the same head-wise. So here, we're gonna finish it off with a, with a simple whip, whip finish. And I just whip finish it once because I'm going to put the glue. You don't need to go crazy here. I'm going to grab my nice small scissor. Cut it off. The next step, I always secure my thread. A little bit of glue. If you're using the brush, a tip I like to give people starting to fly tie is put the glue in the bodkin so it doesn't spread to the head. And makes it look a little messy if you really want your flies to stand out we're gonna add a little bit to the head on your butt on your body just like tying deer hair heads never tie the glue directly use your vodka and that's gonna secure our, our thread last step um we're missing an eye here it's our eyes okay We're gonna get my eyes out of the box. Where's your eyes though? It's right here. Excuse me for a sec. I'm out. Here we go. The eyes are critical. Um, there's been a controversy of if eyes make a difference in these big streamer flies. I honestly fish eyes i'm a big proponent in eyes and i like big eyes i don't use the skinny six millimeter eyes for a fly that's this big if i invest the time doing this fly i'm gonna put a big guy that i feel comfortable it's gonna stand out so we're gonna grab our gel glue we're gonna use our gel and when you put the eyes on these flies you don't want to jam the eye and hold it because you're gonna lose profile okay I know maybe not as durable, but when you put the eye, you just want to gently hold it on the material so you don't lose the vertical profile of the head of the fly. If you just jam it there, then the whole fly head is going to collapse. You want to put the eye, hold it in place. If you lose the eye, who cares? Just put another one in, okay? So we're going to go with our gel. We're running out of gel here. We're going to squish it out here. Cut it off first. There's a little excess here. Somebody was playing with the gel. Okay, here we go. The correct way to set eyes is important. We want to put gel. And that's the amount you want. You don't want very little. You want that's the amount required. So you want to turn the vise over. Set the eye. Take your time, this gel will take minutes, and you just want to hold the eye in place. I'm not pushing hard. If you see, the profile of the fly, it's not changed. I'm not jamming it, I'm just touching it. Hold it right there. Right there. I'm gonna turn the fly over. Grab the other eye. Again, same amount. And I want to look where my other eye went and basically gauge it same way. Look at it to see if it's right. I want him perfect right there. Preen the head a little bit. Hold it. I'm not jamming. I hate jamming the eyes. And I'm going to remove it out of the vise. Look at it. See if the eyes are in the right place. They're, I hate to say it, but they're pretty good there. Hold it. 
lays the let the eye set there, right there. Um, and this would be a fly that would fish great for our Costa Rican tarpon in the ocean. This would be a fly that I would tie for people going peacock bass fishing, payara fishing, dorado fishing, pike fishing. So this is a, a basically a standard streamer that has a lot of different applications. Um, again, when you guys tie your flies, I encourage you guys to critique your flies. Look at your fly. What can, what can I improve from the fly? When I look at from the front, from the back, it does all the fly look equal proportions. And... Um, Engineering good flies takes it all the way to the water. If you engineer good flies, long-lasting flies, um, you're going to have a better success out there. We want to thank um, Backwater Fly Fishing for recording the video. Jesse's been kind enough to spend the last 15 minutes or so recording for us. We want to thank So Mountain Outdoors and uh, Peak Vices for providing us the materials. And uh, I hope you guys learned something from this time experience. Thank you very much.